Hello everyone, I am Dr. Utsav Bansal and I have made this video specifically for all my students who are sending me queries daily as soon as the NEET PG result has been announced regarding ophthalmology as a career. I know there are a lot of queries in a lot of your mind uh, regarding ophthalmology. How is the work life balance? What is the cost of the setup? Should you take it? Are you fit enough? Uh, is it a microsurgery part? Is it difficult to learn? And all the other dilemmas you have. I will be trying to answer all these queries and trying to give my two cents on that. I don't intend to pressurize you into following ophthalmology as a career or rejecting it as a career. This is just my honest take on ophthalmology as a career, a career which I love and which I am living. So let's start. Point number one, work-life balance. I think this is the biggest advantage of being an ophthalmologist. I get to go home at 6 p.m., 7 p.m. I get to enjoy my free time. I spend time with my kid. I am able to pursue my hobbies. I am able to go for a walk. I am able to play badminton. And that's what all of you shall also be able to do. A wonderful work-life balance. Even when you are doing your post-graduation, you will see your night duties will almost always be free because emergencies are very less. Point number two, what about the cost of setup? Yes, I think this is the burning question in all the students mind that we have heard, sir, that the cost of setup is very costly. What if we are first generation doctors? What if we do not have uh, a good financial support? Should we take ophthalmology? I will not lie to you. I know that if you compare ophthalmology to other branches like a medicine or a pediatrics, then ophthalmology setup is costlier. You cannot compare just an OPD. You know, a pediatrician or a, a MD medicine can just have a small room, run his OPD and earn good. But if you want to pursue ophthalmology, you need to buy machines. You need to buy a surgical setup, right? So that does take money. But if you compare it to radiology, so is it costlier than radiology? Obviously not. In radiology, if you are doing your private practice, you will again need to buy an X-ray machine, an ultrasound machine, an MRI machine, a PET scan, blah, blah, blah. So that is equally costly. Similarly, if you're an orthopedician, you are going to buy some robotic machines to do robotic knee replacements, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah again. So if we are comparing surgical fields, then I will say that it is probably just a little more costlier than other fields. But yes, compared to MD fields, it is going to be costly. What is the cost of setup, sir? So 60 to 70 lakh rupees. That is the minimum cost of setup you are looking at to establish a basic OPD plus basic OT setup. When I say basic OPD plus basic OT, that means you are able to see the basic OPD and you are able to perform at least cataract surgery and other anterior segment surgeries like pterygium extraction, collisions, XYZ. Sir, what if we want to establish a premium hospital? A premium eye hospital which will include LASIK, retina and everything else is not going to cost you less than 5 to 6 crore rupees. Obviously, you can keep on adding machines as you go. But that is the range. 60, 70 lakh rupees minimum going up to 5 crore rupees for a decently premium and 10 crore rupees you are fully done. You don't need anything else in life. So that's the amount of cost of setup. What if we are first generation? Should we choose ophthalmology? Uh, see, we have heard nepotism word a lot in Bollywood. So nepotism exists everywhere. If I am a doctor and my father was already an ophthalmologist, obviously it is much more easier for me to set up my practice because half of the job or probably 90% of the job has already been done by my parents, right? So as a first generation in any career, you are going to struggle more than a second generation. So that should not be a choosing point. Lastly, sir, what if we do not have financial support? See, obviously that is personal to each and all. So I will uh, not be able to comment a lot on the financial aspects. I have just given you the numbers. But yes, the more you invest, it's a business at last, the more the returns are. So it depends on your risk taking capability. As doctors, we are not taught financial literacy. But if we were taught financial literacy, we would have understood this concept that if we are investing money, we are investing money to get out the money back and to earn money. It is not that we are donating that money to charity. Have a good talk with your parents about your financial conditions with the numbers I have given you, very basic numbers, and then decide whether it is for you or not. Also, Please understand that even if you are not able to set up your own private practice, there are already jobs existent. So why only private practice? Why can't we look at ophthalmology as a field where we are going to do a job? Number three, what about exposure, sir? So see, the exposure is brilliant if you choose ophthalmology because you get to live both worlds. 
you are an md you are seeing the opd and opd you are seeing everything in the opd there are lots of cases which are the only medically related in ophthalmology starting from glaucoma maxima medical there is medical retina there is oculoplasty there is squint a lot of things are done medically and then obviously you have surgical you have the cataract surgeries you have the retina surgeries you have the squint surgeries uh, you know you have even beautification procedures which are under oculoplasty somebody wants an eyelid lift xyz so you get to live both lives if you are an ophthalmologist which i think is only in ophthalmology unlike let's say if you choose anesthesia anesthesia the doctors are just living behind the curtain there is no patient interaction as such so if you are interested in both the things i think ophthalmology should be your pick point number 4 what about super specialization sir so this is a point which can be considered a pro of ophthalmology or a con of ophthalmology both it depends on how you look at it one way of looking at it is sir there is no super specialization after ophthalmology pg so i won't get to write dm slash mch and all those big degree names my initials will be limited to ms yes this is a con if you see other way around it is the biggest advantage you have how is it an advantage you are getting out of the rat race of the competitive examinations you don't need to appear for another examination you are done it's an end branch so sir does that mean that all of ophthalmologists are the same no there are sub specialties but without a degree they come as form of fellowships so fellowships are a very common way of learning more or sub specializing either in let's say retina or as a squint surgeon or in cornea or in oculoplasty or even becoming a refractive surgeon after you have completed your post graduation there is a list of all the good institutes of uh, uh, which offer fellowship i can name a few arovin lbpi shankar netrale shroff charity eye hospital in delhi gangaram and obviously there are lots more in every region of uh, the country you just have to look where you want to base yourself because that is my advice to everyone always try to get your education from a place where you are going to practice at last as a job or as a private practice it always is better to form connections at a place where you are going to spend the rest of your life most likely Next. yes point number 5 what about sir saturation and competition oh yes again this is a common query a lot of students message me saying sir we have heard there is a lot of competition uh, there is a lot of saturation there are no patients in ophthalmology i beg to differ here when you say there are no patients in ophthalmology i get offended there are no patients anywhere in tier 1 cities or metro cities it's as simple as the number of doctors which are practicing in tier 1 metro cities per 1000 population are way above the average that is required and it is vice versa for the rural population the condition is so worse that no patient wants to wait for you the concept of we will show this doctor has vanished if you are not available 500 meters away there is another hospital another doctor sitting who is ready to see you so it's a business again and everybody is running a business and these businesses are oversaturated the demand and supply is not good in tier 1 metro cities like delhi uh, probably uh, you know bangalore bombay kolkata chennai hyderabad jaipur lucknow you know all these tier 1 cities but as soon as you go into a tier 2 city or a smaller town it is an untapped market there is dearth of doctors there there is a beautiful chance to establish your practice there and believe me tier 2 rural patients they are more trusting they value you more as a doctor they don't value you as a business so if you want to establish your private practice and if you are from a smaller city smaller town or village then my personal advice is to go there and establish your ophthalmology practice you will do wonders in the next coming 20 to 30 years even if you see almost all the mncs who are uh, producing uh, you know fmcg products like toothpaste or all those things that we are consuming they are also saying that the urban growth has stalled and all the growth is in rural india now we want to embolden in rural india and similarly we want to practice in rural areas because that is where the potential of the patient is still nascent point number 6 sir what about the job scenario and uh, what about the salaries we have heard there are no jobs in ophthalmology we have heard there are poor salaries in ophthalmology again you have heard all that if you want to hear it about any other branch you will hear it about any other branch also in all branches the here say is the same there are all kinds of uh, experiences there may be a senior of yours who was not able to get a good job who was not able to get a good job for an year or two but there may also be a senior who got a job pretty quickly 
it all depends on the experience you have and the skills you have. For ophthalmology, I can very confidently say again that SR ships, they are very difficult to get, especially again in good colleges if you are trying. But private practice jobs are very easy to get, but the salary you get will be dependent on your skills. Expect something somewhere around 1.25 lakhs to 1.5 lakhs per month as your starting salary. But at last, the skill and the pedigree matter. If you are from AIMS, if you know surgeries, if you are confident in seeing your OPD, people will not even be shy to pay you a 2 lakh rupee salary per month in the beginning. If you have done subspeciality in retina, in oculoplasty, in squint from a good institute, again, you can be paid up to 2.53 lakh rupees starting also. But if you have come from a government college somewhere in the periphery where you come into an interview and you tell me, sir, we did not get to do FACO emulsification on our own. I have just assisted in the most basic learning surgery, FACO emulsification also. And then if you expect me to pay you, obviously you are expecting wrong. So please understand there is no dearth of jobs. There is no dearth of money. But the salary you get is equivalent to the skills. The salary you get is not equivalent to the degree that you have in your hand. Whether you have done an MS, whether you have done a DNB or whether you have done a diploma does not matter. At last, what matters is what you can add to my institute if I employ you. It is as simple as that. Point number seven. Sir, what about the learning curve? We have heard that ophthalmology involves microsurgeries. So the learning is pretty steep. A lot of students aren't able to learn that, blah, blah, blah. Again, I say, see, all branches are difficult to learn. I was most afraid of MD medicine. I saw Harrison's and I thought, oh, I will have to learn so much to treat some patients. No, I can't. So it depends on you. What do you think is easy? What do you think or where uh, would you like to go? I wanted to be an ophthalmologist. I always liked ophthalmology and I have become an ophthalmologist. Everything is easy to learn. You just are born with it or you have to do hard work for it. But at last you are able to learn it. I can do microsurgery, so can you do microsurgery. What we are confusing when we are thinking about learning curve is actually opportunity. Learning curve will always be there, small or long, as I have said, depends on individual. What is important is opportunity. At last, the problem is that almost all the government colleges, let alone the private colleges in India, they do not provide you with enough opportunity to learn even basic surgeries during the three years of post-graduation. So that, then what to do? So should I not take DNB? Should I take the diploma? Which college should I choose? See, it is not important. After a certain while, after the good colleges are gone, almost all colleges are same. So you have to accept the fact that if you are doing ophthalmology as post-graduation from a grade B college, if I can say that, you are not going to learn a lot during your three years of post-graduation. You will have to do a fellowship after it. You will have to work hard for an SR ship or a job somewhere for learning, not for earning. So your learning becomes longer and your earning becomes a little delayed. Please remember the best way is to choose ophthalmology from a good institute or the second best route is to do it from a grade B decent institute and then go for a fellowship from a good place. That's the only way you learn. Your learning curve will become short if you are able to go at a good place. Lastly, I come on to some miscellaneous points which uh, again I get as queries uh, regarding ophthalmology as a career. Uh, some students ask us, sir, uh, I wear glasses. So will, uh, because we need to use the microscope, so will doing surgeries be easy? Yes, glasses are not a botheration during surgeries. All microscopes, all the machines, they come with inbuilt correction of errors. You can fix the power of your glasses into those machines and you can easily carry out the surgeries. Then we also get a query saying, sir, I have amblyopia. Should I choose ophthalmology as a career again because there are microsurgeries involved? So see, amblyopia is a very big term. What is the degree of amblyopia you have? What is the loss of vision you have? Are you 1 by 60? Are you 6 by 60? Or are you 6 by 9? So it depends on the loss of vision in the amblyopic eye. If your loss of vision in one of the eyes is uh, a lot, you know, let's say you're 6 by 60 or lesser than that, but the other eye is 6 by 6, then I will say probably your binocular vision will uh, not be very good. So probably you should get yourself assessed by an ophthalmologist to see how good is your binocular vision, binocular fixation, how good is your stereopsis and then only choose it. But if you're 6 by 6 in one eye and 6 by 9 in the other eye, please choose ophthalmology without any doubt. Uh, your eye should be fine. Sir, I have hand tremors, but sir, they only occur sometimes. They're only mild. I get anxious. So see, again, 
to answer such queries, it is very difficult. You need to assess your tremors, whether they are due to some medical problem, whether you are suffering from a disease which is going to uh, affect your uh, hand movements, obviously, whether your tremors are going to increase in the future. If they are just anxiety tumors, you will learn to overcome your anxiety. Uh, you probably are 20, 25 years old right now. There are going to be a lot of anxious moments in your life by the time uh, you know you pass away at 100. So you will learn to live with anxiety. Your life is just starting. So don't worry about the anxiety tremors. But yes, if you have some medical disease which is causing hand tremors, then that can possibly be a deterrent in doing microsurgeries. So get yourself examined again, I'll say. Lastly, a uh, lot of queries come on color blindness, sir. Sir, uh, I think I have color blindness. I have color blindness. But 99% of those queries that I get, nobody has ever gone to the trouble of getting themselves examined properly and grading their color blindness. So please get your color blindness graded. That will also help you uh, in um, all the government jobs that you take further. It will also help you in knowing about yourself. But if I talk about the general, general, the most common is a mild red green color blindness. If you have only a mild red green color blindness, I don't think that is a deterrent to take ophthalmology as a branch. So guys, these are my uh, eight cents I can say on ophthalmology as a career or a branch. I hope I have been able to solve all the queries or answer all the questions that generally all of us have uh, with the current uh, neat pg result being announced i congratulate all of you who have been able to pass and uh, get a decent rank enough to choose ophthalmology as a subject i hope this video helps you and if you have any other query please uh, feel free to comment on this video or uh, connect with us on our instagram channel uh, which is mentioned below thank you